Welcome to another video. I am going to just walk through the process of obtaining the standard equation of the hyperbola. If you watched the other video um, that talked about deriving the standard equation of the ellipse, you would know that everything we did was based on the definition of the ellipse. And the same thing we're going to do here for the hyperbola because it's basically um, based on this picture I have drawn. So the hyperbola is basically the locus of all points. The difference of the distances of those points from two fixed points, which we call foci, singular is focus, the difference between the two distances is always constant. And it is that constant that helps us obtain the standard equation. So we're going to use that definition and obtain the standard formula. And that's all I'm going to do in this video. Let's get into the video. So the first thing we want to do is um, understand what the hyperbola is. We know that the hyperbola, the hyperbola is the set of points, or what we say is the locus of points, is the locus of points. Okay? The distance, let's put it this way, the distance of not the distance, the difference of whose distances, that's how we're going to say it. The difference of whose distances from two fixed points, tap, tap. And these are the distances. Distance from this point, distance from this point. There's a difference. You subtract one from the other. The, the difference of whose distance is from two fixed points. Fixed point. And these fixed points are called foci. Is constant. So what does it mean? You see, all the points on this curve are points that satisfy this definition. If you pick any point, let's say you pick this point here, this point, let's call it P, the distance of this point from this point, if you compare it to the distance of this point to this other point, you have a number here, you have a length, you have a length. If you subtract one from the other, the answer you get will always be constant. All we have to know is what is that constant dif distance, okay? And whether you are on this branch of the hyperbola or you're on this branch, the same thing would happen. If you're here and you draw a line to this focus and you draw another line to this focus, the di difference between those two lengths will always be the same thing, no matter where you are. And that's what this is. So what we're going to do is, because I think the hard thing is what exactly is the focus? Right? Um, what exactly is that constant distance? Well, there's an easy way to find it. If we keep moving, remember it is true for every point here. But let's take this point. Okay? For example, the distance of this point on the branch to this focus is from here to here. From here to here is just going to be from A to C. Remember, if we label all of these points, hey, by the way, this is the origin, okay? We always use the origin for the standard equ um, equation so that it's easy for us to do translations. So here, we can say that this is the point 0, 0, okay? This is the point A0. This is the point C, 0, okay? Everything here is minus A0. This point is minus C0. Everything on this line has y value to be zero. So if you notice, the distance from here to here is just a. It's a minus zero. 
the distance from here to here is still a because it is um, 0 minus minus a which is a so now but if we stay at this point we notice so let's go here what we're saying is the distance of p to f1 and p to here so let's just say we're saying that the distance from p to f2 p f2 this distance minus the distance from p to f1 p to f1 is equal to constant what is that constant well let's find it so let's say p moves to this point you notice that the distance from here to here is going to be um, from minus c all the way to a so it's going to be a minus negative c so it's going to be a plus c yeah it's going to be a plus c actually that's a plus c and the distance from here to here is going to be c minus a this is going to be c minus a so this is equal to a plus c okay minus the distance from here to here is going to be c minus a c minus a so what does this give us this gives us a plus c minus c plus a which is equal to 2a oh so every time you move around the distance between the difference between the two distances will always be 2a and that's all we need we need the constant from here we can move on to anything so let's find a general formula assuming p is not here you know we, we, we were able to tell what this p is because it's a zero but let's say we're going from here what is the distance from here to here we have to use the distance formula what is the distance from here to here we have to use the distance formula so let's do it so here we know by the distance formula is going to be the square root so we're saying that the square root of x minus minus c plus y minus zero squared squared is going to give us that distance so this is going to be x plus c squared plus y squared okay minus we take the square root of the other one this one it's going to be x minus c squared oh okay i squared it and then y minus zero squared so it's going to be x minus c squared plus y squared is going to be that constant distance to a that's it and from here all we have to keep doing is just algebra 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 you know what we can move this to this side remember if you want to remove square roots from both sides you only need to keep one square root the other square root has to go to the other side so we can write this as the square root of x plus c squared plus y squared will be equal to 2a plus the square root of x minus c squared plus y squared okay let's let's use this space so now we need to square both sides if i square this side it's going to get rid of the square root sign so on the left i'm going to have x plus c squared plus y squared if i square this okay if i square this side let me put the square symbol here so you can see what i've done square square so if i square this it's going to be the square of the first term just simple algebra a plus b squared equals a squared plus 2ab plus b squared so that's what i'm going to do here so we're just going to do it in our heads so the square of this is going to be 4a squared plus 2ab 2 times this times this is going to be 4a times this it's going to be 4a times the square root of x minus c squared plus y squared and then 
we're going to have the square of this, which removes the square root, and that's all. So it's going to be plus x minus c squared plus y squared. Okay, we've removed the square root. But what this does for us is that it gives us y squared here, y squared here. We can cancel out the two y squares. Cha, cha. I can bring the x minus c. To, in fact, we're going to move everything to this side and leave this guy here because it has the square root and we want to square both sides. Remember, when you square both sides, you want to keep one square root on one side. So we're going to have x plus c squared. If I move this here, it's going to become minus x minus c squared. And then I'm going to have um, this guy here, minus 4a squared. Okay, and what's going to be left on this side will be 4a times the square root of x minus c squared plus y squared. Um, before I square both sides, we want to clean this up, okay? Okay. But what I have done has caused everybody to have a 4. So I can actually divide every term by 4 so that I am left with cx minus a squared equals a times the square root of x minus c squared plus y squared. Okay, so right now we just have to square both sides. We did the same thing. If we square this, we're going to end up with c squared x squared minus 2c, 2a squared um, c x and plus a to the fourth. That's the expansion of this. And here, this is going to become a squared. And the square root sign is going to disappear here. And if it disappears, we're going to end up with, let me write it one more time, um, x minus c squared plus y squared. OK. Okay, let me see if I can um, release this guy. This is going to be, if we expand this, it's going to give us x squared minus 2cx plus c squared. So I'm going to have a squared x squared, after expanding this, minus 2a squared cx plus a squared minus plus a squared c squared plus a squared c squared plus y squared. That's what I'm going to have on this side. Oh, however, this guy is exactly this guy. So this can take this out. Um, what else is similar? It doesn't look like there's anything else. C squared x squared. Yeah, I don't have it. Yeah, so that's the only thing that cancels out. So I might as well just have c squared x squared. Anything that, oh, I have another one here. Minus, if I move this over here, so let's just put the equal sign here. So if I move this over here, so I'm going to have c squared x squared minus a squared x squared. Okay, I've moved this over. I'm going to move this y minus y squared. So what I have left are these two guys, a to the fourth. You know what? I'm going over here. I'm going to move this a to the fourth to the other side since it doesn't have x or y. So it's going to be a squared, a squared c squared minus a to the fourth. Nice. So what happens? This is looking good because now I can factor out x squared. I can write this as c squared minus a squared times x squared minus y squared equals a squared into c squared minus a squared. Okay. Now,
um, I'm beginning to think that I am going to divide everything by a squared. <laughs> Did I miss something? I think I missed something. Oh, I know. When I removed the square root, there was a bracket here because this a squared is supposed to multiply all of them. So this guy is supposed to be a squared y squared plus a squared y squared. So this guy has an a squared beside it. Yeah, minus a squared y squared, a squared y squared. Okay, so now it makes sense because now I'm going to divide everybody by this. So this is the question. Is it possible for me to divide by a squared c squared minus a squared? Because if it is not possible, then we can't do it. So let's go here. What is a? It is the vertex. Okay, if a is zero, then it cannot be a hyperbola. Because you're going to end up with some fake infinity, something like this. Okay, so A is not zero. Okay, that's number one. Number two, because if A is zero, then there will be no distance. Everything is going to be zero. It's going to be a problem. So A is not zero. Secondly, A is not C. Look. If A is C, it means that this is the focus and then there is no distance. So there will be no distance if, if A is equal to C. So there's so many reasons why. Let's write, since A is greater than zero and A is not equal to C, the focus is not the vertex. Okay, so... That's the condition here where we're just going to say, okay, let's do the division. C squared minus A squared times X squared divided by A squared times C squared minus A squared minus A squared Y squared over A squared times C squared minus A squared will be equal to 1 because this is dividing itself. So right now, this can take this out and this a squared can take this out. Take this out. So you have x squared over a squared minus y squared over, um, instead of writing c squared minus a squared, I'm going to write b squared equals 1. So, and just a little caveat, is that b squared equals c squared minus a squared. And that's it. This is the standard equation of all hyperbolas. So as you can see, a cannot be zero and b cannot be zero. a cannot be zero. And B cannot be zero because that's the same thing as A is not equal to C. I hope um, you're able to follow this. Leave a comment in the comment section. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.